we go. We are on. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Relationship Rehab with Lee. And Paul. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that here. That's for the radio show. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all I know how to do. Okay. And darn, that didn't work. Go ahead. Keep talking. I didn't Say work. hi. Hello. Got new haircuts. Uh -huh. Just for the show. That's right. That's not true. It's because it was driving us crazy. Um, so, much to talk about. That's much right. to do. Yep. Um, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about core <laughs> values, but first, you know, let's just, right. you know, recap the week. Um, <sighs> what's been going on? Um, getting ready. Um, Paul's parents are yep. coming next week. Yep. Uh, hmm. Visiting. The last time they visited, our youngest, Ricky, was only a few months old. Yeah, right. Yes. And he's three now. So the last time we heard was basically three years ago. Mm -hmm. So yes, so we were getting the house ready and centering ourselves and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to it. Yeah, I have I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm yeah. not concerned. But Boom, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Valium. Valium. <laughs> no, it should be good. I just yeah. you know I just need to get everything together yeah and of course we decided to like redo the backyard and everything so the whole house is like in an uproar until all that's done yes yeah. and get rid of what is it like half of our books mm -hmm. and basically the only clean part that you're seeing right now is directly behind us <laughs> this is it. yeah, yeah this the is rest it. of the house looks yeah and us because we shower you, regularly yeah. that's it yeah yeah so <laughs> but why why are we doing all that because I don't want to hear because... shit from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, yeah, that would be reason number one. Yeah, it? No, reason okay. number two would Got be because it. it's a core value of ours. Yes, uh, we don't want to hear shit from my Yes, eyes. <laughs> I, would rather, I would rather gouge out my own eyes uh -huh. and have to listen to my mother give me shit. Yeah, me too. This there is a core go. value. Core value that yep. we share. Uh -huh. So, and this is good. Um, so we're talking about core values. It's like, you know, yeah. why, why bother? But let's, you know, what, what's a core value? Yeah. What is a core value? I for? have no idea. Honestly, I, I, I didn't find a really good definition of core value. Not even what I, I wrote on Monday? Huh? Well, yeah, that's why I figured you would yeah. like talk about that. Being <laughs> that you wrote it. <laughs> God. She usually wants me to memorize everything she writes and I... I don't have the mind for it. You do. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it's pushing me. You know, you, you could just spend the week with your parents. I'm good with that. No, no, no. I need you. I need you. <laughs> yeah, I think you do. Okay. So, let's see. Core values. What are yeah. they? They're the ideals mm -hmm. okay. that we have. They, these are ideals. These are non-conflicting ideals that we keep. Mm-hmm. Why do I say non-conflicting? That makes a bigger, that makes more sense when we start talking about the difference between a belief and a core value. Core value are the things that we put worth into, ideals that that mean so much to us. Mm -hmm. um, core values are the ideals that are the deal breakers. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. when I say deal breakers, are those are the things that when somebody doesn't really line up with your core value, those are the those are the people that you're willing to go, okay, bye bye. Right. I don't really need you in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, when when we get confused about our core values or when we're or when we are up in the air with our core values, then that's when we allow all sorts of leeches and vampires and assholes in our life. Right. Yeah. And then also when you know, she she calls it the deal breakers, but I call it the get it's. Because, you know, I'm more optimistic, I guess. No. Um, basically, in a, in a relationship, it's that, that value. I mean, I hate to use the word, of, you know, to define Work. yourself. But, yeah, that thing inside the other person that you really get. And it really doesn't so much matter what they're saying. It's the spin on it. It's a yeah. foundation. It's right. where everything comes from. Mm -hmm. This is why you act the way you act. This is what creates your personality. Right. This is what drives you. This is who makes you who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, so when when I say things like I value 
honesty and I value being an integrity and I value being truthful. This makes me the bitch that I am. You know, when I talk about being a bitch, I don't I don't mean that in that, you know, that skanky, nasty way. I mean it by the way that people react to me sometimes because I am truthful and I am honest. I'm in your face and I'm not willing to compromise my core value of integrity to make you feel more comfortable. Right. Not that I'm going to be rude or not that I'm going to be... Um, I don't know, uh, rude, what else, uh, impolite in mm -hmm. any way, you All know, right. to violate your boundaries. But if you're asking me a question or if you expect me to, to behave a certain way because that's how you see it and that that goes against who I am, then I'm not going to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I take, you know, it's taken me, you know, it's funny because for me, when I was a kid, I behave like that. I always behave like that. And then, um, you know, the woman you fell in love with mm -hmm. when we met behaved like that. I, absolutely. And then as we were married, mm -hmm. we met a bunch of other people who told me to stop behaving like that. Mm -hmm. And I did. Yeah. And I was miserable. Mm -hmm. Totally Definitely. miserable. <laughs> totally miserable. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped behaving like that and started being me again. Mm -hmm. And then there was another little period of not behaving like that when I lost faith and when I lost me and I became very fearful. Right. And, which directly conflicted with your core values. Oh, yeah. Which was like, you know, I couldn't even, I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin. Right. And then I found me again and here I am. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's every time I have forgotten who I am, forgotten my core value mm -hmm. you know my core values are being integritous and being honest and truthful mm -hmm. and being ambitious and and um a family sense of humor right. and family mm -hmm. and love and happiness right. and um you know the idea that it's okay to be alone mm -hmm. it's okay to be alone and be happy with myself Rather than be surrounded by assholes, you know, and be miserable. Right. You know, some people have, you know, weird, weird core values where, I mean, well, I consider them weird, mm -hmm. where they're willing to put up with a lot of crap just so they won't be alone. Mm. I'm not one of those people. No. <laughs> Either am I. Yeah. And that's why we're together. That's right. So that's core value in a nutshell. Mm. Core value is defining who you are. Right. You know, mm -hmm. um, by by pointing out certain ideals. Like I have a list here. Okay. Where do I have my list? Right there. No, I don't. No. Right here. Right there. Um, go ahead and read those because I don't have my glasses. Okay. So we have adventure, balance, confidence, control, creativity, discipline, education, faith, family, financial. Education. How many people do you meet that don't value education? Mm hmm Um. I find that just to be like, are you kidding me? Right. You know, education is definitely one of our core values. Absolutely. Yeah. And <laughs> usually that's yeah. a very direct line from your parents. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if, you're, if your parents valued mm -hmm. education, then you will value education. Right. But And actually I would twist it to say our, uh, our value is learning. Not just education. Yeah, but we also value it, a, a formal education. Yeah, too. right. But there is a there, there's more to that, because see, I would say that the formal education is more of a belief, whereas learning is the core value. See, that's where mm, I'm. No, because I would I would actually I would argue this okay. because we put we put a lot of that we put a lot of worth mm -hmm. in a piece of paper. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we value our degrees. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that we value right. this to the point where we insist our children do this kind of thing. Right. It is a value mm -hmm. that we have. Okay. We, we put a lot of worth mm -hmm. in attending the right school. I mean, right. okay, we're talking to a mom here who's spending at least an hour <laughs> every day handling, you know, our daughter's future education. True. 
Right. So don't tell me I don't value it. Yeah. Okay, it's not just a belief. Mm -hmm. It's not a belief at all. Okay. Because we've met a lot of intelligent people. Mm -hmm. And what's the first thing we say? Wow, what a waste that they didn't go to school. Yeah, well, this is true. Yeah. Bam. Yeah, this is true. That's that's mm -hmm. where, you know, okay, great, they're intelligent, fantastic. Mm -hmm. But did they get the did they get the formal training? Mm -hmm. Did they do something with it so that society can use that? Yeah. See, because that's, I mean, really, that's also... Yeah, but it's, there's, I guess, it, because the learning aspect, you know, that's why I'm just not saying education, because if you pound it through a bunch of degrees and then stop, that still doesn't match our, our values. Because yeah, we continue, that. well, no, because you continue to educate yourself one yes. way or the other. Okay? Because, yeah, you got your, you pound it through your degrees quickly yeah. but then there's I'm not the saying I'm not saying I'm not at, hold on know. hold on but I'm not saying that we stop at just education I value education right but I also value um that's why I'm using I value okay no I, I value intelligence mm -hmm. I value learning yeah, too those are, it's like yeah. these are all but I I have a whole mm -hmm. group of things right. that I value a lot mm -hmm. and you know that right. being intelligent and learning mm -hmm. and you know, uh, God, debate in yeah. general is very Which important. is really, okay, one of the things that I'm noticing, oh. I mean, this conversation, just learning it right now, myself, is that when we talk about core values compared to maybe beliefs or little aspects of core values, a core value, you might not be able to sum it up in one word, you know? No, you can't. This, well, you see, a you belief know. is an idea. Right. A belief can be contradictory. You can mm -hmm. have several beliefs mm -hmm. that actually contradict themselves. Right. You can't do that with core values. Yeah. And that is really the big difference between mm -hmm. the two of them. You can't be, you know, um, you can't be, let's see, like, a, I mean, we call ourselves hippies, but we are so not really hippies, you know, mm -hmm. we're not. No, I know. Okay. Right. right. We're not. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we do value ambition and we do value, we do right. value success yes. and we do value money and we do value you know, uh -huh. you know things like that. We're not going to put on our sandals and go walk in the woods. Mm -hmm. You know, unless we're going to get paid to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. If anybody's out yeah. there who would like to <laughs> sponsor us, there to, you go. You know, we'll walk we'll be happy woods. to do that. Yes. But <laughs> with our computer. With our computer, of course. <laughs> um, but the reality is, is that you know, we do we do value mm -hmm. certain beliefs of that hippies have. Right. We value community. Mm -hmm. We value um, the environment. Right. Um, Taking care of Mother Nature, all those and all those things. things. But mm -hmm. I think that all stems from you know the core values of being integrated in society mm -hmm. and integrating right. it, integrating into our community. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. So things that I'm realizing also then core value. You know, we talk about being and doing. Core values are definitely being stated. Definitely. Okay. Because even our list here, it's basically adventurous, balanced, confident, you know, controlled, in this case, you know, a being statement, you know, creative. Mm hmm. Educated. And then beliefs are what? Hmm? Beliefs are what? Beliefs, are, I would say, are the doings. Are the doings, right. are totally. Are the doings. Because yeah. everything that you believe in are things that you do. Mm -hmm. So, like, when we say things like, this is the difference between people who believe in God and people who have a core value of faith. Right. Yes. Okay. That's people who believe right. in God mm -hmm. don't, I mean, are more apt at some points in their life when their faith is tested to stop believing in God if they don't have a core value of faith in something bigger than themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is a big one. You know, this is something that you have to learn the hard way, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, um, many things, and, and yeah, I'm going to take a break on this one because this is a really important thing. When we talk about rehabbing a relationship, you know, the primary relationship you have on this earth is with yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> the second one, I would say, is between you and your concept of where you belong in the universe. Right. Okay. And some of us like to define that as saying, do you believe in God? Mm -hmm. um, and it's not that I believe in God. Okay. Do you trust and have faith in God? Right. It's not believing in God. Yeah, of course, you know, little kids believe in God. 
Uh, little kids believe in Santa, Santa Claus. Claus. That's right. Little Tooth kids fairy. believe in the tr Tooth Fairy. Uh -huh. When we talk about believing in God, we're talking about something that is really almost immature, you know, in the sense of uh, what level of relationship do you have with God, and however you define it. I'm not. I'm yeah, not we're putting, not going to go there. Yeah, we're not going there. I don't really care. Yeah. You know, yeah. Christian, you know, Easter, whatever. Right. Whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so, when you learn to value your faith and trust in God, then no matter what happens in your life, that's unshaken. Yes. You don't, I mean, it's mm -hmm. like... You could lose, you know, you could lose a very important person in your life right next to you. Mm -hmm. And that won't shake the core value that you trust in God. Right. You know, it's like, of course you believe in God. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why you can get pissed at God. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very healthy to get angry with God. It's, you know, because I think it's angry. I've tried it. It works. <laughs> I think it's very healthy to be able to express that anger mm -hmm. with God. But believing and trusting and having faith in mm. are worlds apart. Right. Yeah. Worlds apart. Mm -hmm. You know, belief makes you go to church on Sunday. Belief makes you, you know, you know, cross yourself when you're walking into the church. Uh, belief makes you um, uh, keep a Lenten promise. Mm -hmm. You know, um, great. Fantastic if that's what floats your boat. Mm -hmm. For me, um, being able to trust and have faith mm -hmm. is a lot more powerful and a lot more forwarding in my life mm -hmm. than just believing. Because that's where the relationship part comes right. in. That's the connectedness. That's right. the, you know, when we talk about, you know, some religions talk about, uh, you know, the divinity inside you. Um, you know, some talk about grace, um, but that's where Bliss. that's where all of that comes from. Bliss, Bliss right? Mm -hmm. That's where where all of that because wow. that's where the relationship is. Yes, you know, the connectedness. Yeah, and then when you're connected, then it's mm -hmm. not really a question of, you know, it's not religion anymore. Right. Yeah. It's a relationship. Mm -hmm. See, that's the difference. I have I have more issue with religion because there's so much man-made crap around it that I like being in relationship, you know, instead. Yes. Because now, it's just about, you know, God, the universe, that higher being, whatever you want to call them, and me. Right. And one of the reasons we're bringing this up is because when it comes to core values, um, there's like four or five domains of core values that really are predictors of a healthy, happy marriage mm -hmm. or relationship is being able to share those. One of them is spirituality. Right. And again, the the difference though is it's not religion, it's, right. it's spirituality. And I think that that's where we get all torqued yeah. up, people. You know, we, we get torqued up on things that are very superficial. Right. We get torqued up on things like, well, he's Jewish and I'm Christian. Mm -hmm. How is this ever going to work? You know, or... Yeah. Um, you know, at, at this time, he's a Buddhist, I'm a Hindu. How's this ever going to work? <laughs> I like that. Yes. Yeah, if you, you look at... We're going to create our own, like, uh, Jerry Seinfeld kaka show, like, marriage <laughs> ref, and do, how's this going to work? Yeah, right. You know, uh -huh. I like it. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> hey, Cougar Mama, get on that. Yes. Get me a bunch of dysfunctional relationships together and... Mm -hmm. um, and we'll We're do things it. like, and we'll go, how's this going to work? <laughs> and we'll fix them. Watch us. That's right. We're good. Yeah, if you look at a, um, let's go, you know, good old Christianity. If you've got one, uh, one of the people who thinks that God is, um, you know, a smiting, vengeful God, and the other one has the, you know. Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus loving, mm -hmm. uh, you, know, um, you know, God of love. They may both be of the same faith, but they're not sharing the same value. You know, they're not sharing the same relationship with God. Um, 
they don't value they don't value, they don't value right. God the same way right one sees it I mean they don't okay the person who sees God as a vengeful God and things like that doesn't tend to value God at all their belief is yeah, that it's a punisher so. no but it's a, the value the worth that they're putting into it is very different okay you know what I mean it's like it's not what they see that is more like you know having a disciplinarian mm -hmm. right. okay so if anything they value discipline All right and some people i mean to some, and some people, people that's, do you know it's that like that would be important um All right you know but i'm not you know obviously that doesn't match with ours so you know we immediately go you know you know react to that yeah. um the point is though that the there's that's again the difference between the belief and the value you know, whereas if you've got, let's say you've got a Christian, you know, a Christian and a Jewish person uh, married together, um, they can still share the same spiritual value that would allow mm -hmm. them to have a strong marriage. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like Paul wrote um, yesterday about people like uh, James Carville and Mary Madeline. I mean, she yeah. was, she, she ran um, the first Bush's uh, presidential mm -hmm. election and she, and he ran and Clinton's, Clinton's election. <laughs> they actually were complete opponents, mm -hmm. and they're married, and they seem pretty happy. I mm -hmm. mean, I don't really know a lot about their marriage, right. but how would they end up getting married? You know, and people were like, "Oh well, because they had chemistry. Chemistry doesn't mean shit." Yeah, that's and, right. Uh -uh. And that really, I mean, chemistry is lust. Yes. Great, fantastic, but lust doesn't keep you married. That's you know, bottom line, lust does not carry a relationship. It's mm -hmm. fun. I'm not saying oh, it's yeah. not, right. yeah. but it's not something that's going to keep you going forever and ever. Mm -hmm. All right, that was a great example. Exactly. Yes, I mean, right. seriously, he picked the hoe. Uh huh. Okay, and I, I can't even watch. What? Is it? Okay, that's yeah. cool. Um. <clears throat> yeah. Seriously, you could just. I mean, and it's not even. I never even watched the show. Mm -hmm. I just watched little mm -hmm. snippets and read things. And just looking at her face, you're going, oh, my God, that's the hoe. That's so and the other one looked right. like, you know, little girl next door. And he picked the hoe. Uh -huh. So he went for the blowjob. That's what right. it is. <laughs> he went for the girl who was going to blow him. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's his core belief. Yeah. You know, and then when you create a relationship. Yeah, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. When you create a relationship on this idea of, actually, we had a question like this on the radio show the other day, of, this guy was dating a girl they've been dating for a year but she won't do oral sex and she won't talk about it she won't do yeah. anything about it yeah, you're not allowed to talk about not it. even allowed to talk about it now our first you know when we answer it we usually like take about 10 minutes to answer things mm -hmm. so we we break it down to the obvious and then get into the more philosophical as we as we talk but it's like the first part is okay so she doesn't give a blowjob big deal mm -hmm. you know live without if yeah, there's right. a, if this it's is not gonna, you know, yeah. it's not going to kill a relationship. Right. However, the part that sticks in our craw is the idea that she won't even talk about mm -hmm. it. Okay? And that unwillingness to talk about it. Okay? So then we're talking about a different core value. Right. Okay? If you are open in your relationship, if you value openness in your in your relationship, you see how I did that? Yeah, very nice. Value, <laughs> openness in a relationship, then you're willing to talk about anything. Mm -hmm. Okay? Even if you're not, I mean, it's like, um, you know, okay, let's let's get nasty here. Okay, a lot of women aren't willing to do anal sex. Yes. Okay? But are you not <laughs> willing to do it or not willing to talk about it? Mm -hmm. That's a different thing. Right. Okay? It's like if you're, if the guy really wants to do it, then you talk about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and a relationship is healthier if they discuss things. There should be no off-topic right, kind yeah. of you no know, off-limit type of mm -hmm. topic. There should always be an open dialogue. So if he says, "Hey, listen, I would really like to do anal sex," and she's like, "Nope, sorry, not even talking about it," then there's a problem right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not about the anal sex; it's about not talking about it. So then. You can come to an agreement, okay, let's try it once, whatever, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the idea of saying no, now, there should be the deal breakers, and this is where the values come in. We've talked about these right. 
before when, it when we talked about sex and things like that. The deal breakers are, you know, what keeps you in integrity? Well, in my integrity, in my marriage, and if we're going to talk about sex, since we're already talking about it, um, things like bringing in somebody else. Well, I consider that cheating. Mm -hmm. You right. know, that's infidelity in my book. Mm -hmm. So I made a commitment that I wouldn't do that. So, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I, I don't even right. want to discuss it. A real brief, uh, you know, logical side note. Obviously, if two people don't share the value of being married, then they're not going to be married. No. <laughs> they're not going to stay married. They're not going to stay married. Right? You know, that's actually... Thank okay. you. Hmm. It's actually something we're talking hmm. about next week on the blog where we're talking about the state of marriage and how... I mean, we've really just gotten really messed up on what marriage is. And it doesn't matter which where you're coming from, whether you're coming from this ultra-religious background where marriage is so important to have family, whatever, or you're coming from this, you know, what the hell, let's try it. If it doesn't work, we'll just get divorced. You know, it doesn't, the statistics don't bear out either one. Mm -hmm. It's not like the religious people are staying married longer. On the contrary, if you look at the statistics, they're not. You know, so what is it that we're actually valuing the in a marriage. divorce rates are in like Arkansas and Oklahoma. Yeah, Arkansas and Oklahoma have the highest divorce rates. Arkansas and Oklahoma are smack dab in the middle of the Bible Belt. Yeah. Okay? It's like most of them are having some sort of religious ceremony, you know, but then again, Sorry, most of them are shotgun. <laughs> you know. What? That most of them are shotgun. Are shotgun weddings. I'm not lying. That's not true. Most of them are shotgun weddings. They may be. I yeah. have not read any of those statistics. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> I said it. Value mm -hmm. what I say. I got it. This is true. <laughs> Many people confuse going to church with being religious. And you know what? I don't even yeah. say the words religious anymore. I'd rather say spiritual because honestly, mm -hmm. after all the stuff that religion has done, I can't even say I could do that. You know, I mean, come on, Caesar, we're talking about... A couple of people who are kicked out of the Catholic Church. Yes. We have our issues with yeah. <laughs> yeah. organized no. religion. <laughs> and the thing is that, you know what? And the reality is, is that the reason why we were cut, cut out was because of our core values. Mm -hmm. Because we refused to lose our integrity. And that's what we were being asked to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we worked at it. We were working at a church. And we were doing the best job possible, and because we weren't willing to put our heads down and allow the parishioners to abuse us, because that's really what was happening. I mean, there's no other way of putting it. You know, they were talking about us. They were maligning us. They were slandering and libeling us. Mm. You know, they were, yeah, talking about us, writing about us, yeah. sending emails out about us. I mean, everything. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't like yeah, us for yes. whatever reason <laughs> and blamed us for things that we hadn't even done. It was actually the pastor. Because we wouldn't mm -hmm. allow people to do that, we were kicked out of the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my relationship with God is a lot stronger and more important to me than a church. Yes. Yeah. And actually for me, I mean, that whole experience it helps solidify my relationship with god because mm -hmm. you know in my case the reason i went into this was if you will to look for you know i wanted a message from god and god supplied it get out, <laughs> get out. it was get kind of out. an Am amityville kind of message yeah. Ooh, <laughs> right. there was some blood, the blood on the walls, on the walls. <laughs> yeah. it was it was very funny because i remember after having the discussion with the priest and really just being in shock, like, you know, I was in shock while we were having the conversation. And it was one of those, I can't believe we're having this conversation. And then in the middle of it, all of a sudden getting that whole, whoa. Mm -hmm. um, and then really just saying some things that we, we needed to say, you know, mm -hmm. to him that, you know, that we needed to get off our chest. No, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing to be rude, just a little mm -hmm. coaching to him. He was a lousy communicator, yeah, which right. was true. Oh. <laughs> you know, and vaya con Dios, you know, Padre. But other than that, I mean, yeah, we were good about it. We left. We didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. We didn't, unlike other people. This is true. Okay. Yeah. Anyhow. <laughs>
<laughs> Not necessarily a favorite topic of mine anymore. <laughs> no, but you know what? It's... Oh, Ricky's up. Ooh, ooh. Uh -oh. Ricky's up. Our son's up. Right. What's up, buddy? Let me see if I can get He's back in very rosy-cheeked. He took his under the covers. Okay, yeah. And he's going back to bed. Okay, so where am I? Um, we talked about, okay, why poor beliefs? Okay, it's what bonds us with other people. You know, have you ever noticed when you're hanging out with your friends that you guys pretty much, if you stripped out all the, the exterior stuff, it's almost like you're the same people? It's because you share core values. And, um, you know, it's like, and you find out the hard way growing up. Um, and you make friends because, you know, you like the same music and, and you like this or you like that. And as you get older, that doesn't really mean that much to you anymore. And that's because you start even, you know, it's like unconsciously gravitating towards those who share core values with you. Um, those are your true friends. And true friends are the ones that are willing to say, any, you know, um, or are there mm -hmm. for you. Uh, the true friends are the ones who aren't honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, you're bonded on a different level. You know, it's almost molecular, actually. Because okay. when we talk about, okay, he's up again. Yeah. When we talk about core values, it, it really is almost like a molecular level. Okay. You know, we you don't, do. very rarely do we, um, what is it? discard core values like decide okay I'm not it's not that important to me anymore um, we will occasionally do things that are against our core values and even then we have almost a physical reaction to it you know it's like um, you know, think about movies like where um, I'll try to scratch myself where the like the heroine is put in a situation where they have to kill and you see them just like crumble after that you know, it's like you they've done something against their core value. Um, a lot of trauma from war comes from um, violating your own core values. Um, you know, it's like whatever they valued before they went. And then they went and did things that was against who they are. Okay. And I'm not saying anything about war. I'm saying, you know, what I'm saying is that some people don't belong over there because that's not part of who they are you know and then there are some people here that that are okay with them and they should be the ones over there so what i'm saying is the clearer we are about our core values the easier our life is you know we have a lot of friends okay no we have had friends and mm -hmm. acquaintances um several of them who were attorneys yeah okay and out of let's say four of them that were attorneys one's a good great attorney no two of them are pretty good attorneys yeah all right okay but let's see two of them are lousy attorneys mm -hmm. because their core values really don't speak to being an attorney even though they're they've got that slimy thing going mm -hmm. they're they don't value um certain parts of being an attorney right okay mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. we have one our you know our primary one who is our attorney mm -hmm. um she's a great attorney she loves being an attorney yep you know ethical uh great you know um what else can you say about her funny funny uh, smart i mean very yeah. smart you know then yeah. we have the other one who's actually a pretty good attorney but he hates it absolutely completely <laughs> hates it yeah and he doesn't want to do it he has to do it you know for mm -hmm. his family blah 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 you know so then he sells out his soul so that he can be an attorney okay right. and every day that he does it it eats at it eats at him so you know where where's the integrity in that where's you know and the, i mean yeah not everybody has integrity but Integrity is also not necessarily a value that you have to have, but you have to be integrity with what you believe, you know, what your value, what you put value in and what you do. Mm -hmm. So like if you, if you put value in being happy and you 
do or you believe in you know being an attorney which makes you miserable because it's going to make you money then you're out of integrity mm -hmm. get it yes yeah so um yes okay so what i'm saying is <laughs> you know try to combine the two mm -hmm. you know um mm -hmm. that's a this is a big this is a big one you know when we talk about um, what you do in your life and who you are in your life. That's a really big thing. And I, and I know, um, I know, you know, one of our watchers here, mm -hmm. Cougar Mama here, we've talked a lot about, you know, putting up with a lot of stuff, um, which sometimes goes against our core values. And that's why we make the big and ugly decisions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, would you say that core values like speak to authentic self? Yes. Okay. Even like core, the divine. Yeah, the divine core values. Self? Okay. But core values are mm. are like your soul. Mm -hmm. It defines your soul. It defines who you are, your being. Okay. In that case, see, and then that's where how you manifest the things in you know from your core values can kind of get screwed up. Okay, so for example, um, one of my core values is safety. Okay, that one I have somewhat discovered in in my life is that I I value being safe and having everything around me feel safe and that kind of stuff. Now, there's healthy ways of keeping myself safe, and then there's not so healthy, and that's where the belief part can kind of screw up the can um what would you say like tweak out the warp yeah warp thank you the um, you how you manifest your core values um so like i can decide that money makes me safe if i had really a lot of money then i would be safe now yeah <laughs> that speaks totally to my core value God, of having bling bling right yes um so i could turn into a workaholic Ooh, oh right, which i did yeah. and which you are <laughs> which i am right and you know and i can just start you know making money making money making money making money and everything else you know goes to to pot no, not necessarily a healthy way of doing it but unless I know what my core value is, it's really going to be difficult to correct the behavior. Mm -hmm. I mean, why would I correct the it's behavior? It's like, where did it come from? Where did it come from? You know, it's like um, when, when people become addicts in general, it's to ease a pain. So whatever the pain is. So when we become, let's say, let's look at our list of things. Mm -hmm. And when one of our core values is... Let's see. Okay, family mm -hmm. is definitely one. All right. Control. Mm -hmm. um, when you feel, let's say, one of your core values is being in control. Most people drink um, to regain a control. Mm -hmm. So when they feel that their life is out of control, right. they mm -hmm. drink to regain control. Which, of course, you know, when you look at it, you're going, oh, my God, that's completely ridiculous. Why would you do that? Because you drink really to right. get out of control, right? But they don't see it that way. Mm -hmm. It's very warped in their, in their thinking. Right. When so, you're in the hole, really all you see is the walls. Yeah, the exactly. Walls, so, you, know. you know, things like um, when you value control, you can become a sex addict mm -hmm. to control other people. And you can control your sexuality. And... Mm -hmm. These these are all ways of warping these these core values, and if we didn't know that if one of our core values is control, then you wouldn't realize that this is coming from the essence of who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and you know, very important to know that your essence, your your true self, and all that wonderful stuff that the who you are is minus what your parents put in there. What do you mean? Explain. Explain. Explain that one. Our parents teach us a lot of stuff. And I love my parents. I adore my parents. They're wonderful people. Um, you know, we have a pretty good relationship. Um, I laugh with them. I have fun with them. 
I am not them. No. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, um, when I was younger, you know, my parents are Cuban. My parents are are fascist in general mm -hmm. um, because, of course, they came from communist Cuba, so they've got to be the exact right. opposite, mm -hmm. which is not really opposite of communism if you really think about it. But, um, and, you know, so then growing up, very con I was very conservative, you know, definitely Republican, doing the Republican thing as gr growing up then noticing, wait a second, I don't necessarily agree with certain things. Now, as a 44-year-old, I have my political beliefs. They have their political beliefs. They're not the same beliefs. They're not the same <laughs> beliefs. And, <clears throat> but what ends up happening is that you start defining that, okay, this part of me was not me. This was them. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so you, you pull that out and you subtract that from what really your core value is. Right. I mean, it's like saying, yeah, these are things that I value. Yeah, I value a lot of things. There are, are they my core values? No. No, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. that's important. Right. Very important. Things like um, jealousy. Mm -hmm. My parents value jealousy. Right. My parents think that mm -hmm. jealousy is like the mm -hmm. way to go. My parents are those hot, passionate Latinos mm -hmm. that you hear about. Right. You know, that, you know, they're in their fucking 70s and they're so jealous of each other. I'm like, Jesus Christ, who the hell wants either <laughs> one of you? But, um, they're still jealous mm -hmm. and they value that and they think that that shows love right. and that it just shows sickness. Right. Cause see, I would say that, uh, passion is a core value that they mm -hmm. have. You know, they believe in, in passion. There's definitely this. No, they, no, they, they value, value passion. passion. They, have they believe this, in jealousy. Right. Yes. That's where it kind of got worked right. with it. Whereas I value passion, mm -hmm. but I act on it by being, understanding and trusting and loving and open and things like that right. mm -hmm. not um yeah and yeah uh caesar we have uh asked him what he wanted to do instead of practicing law and well one he gave us a list of things he doesn't want yes he's not a very a <laughs> he's, he's a miserable sad sack yeah <laughs> and um we no longer associate with him because he is committed to being a miserable sad sack yeah and because we value fun. being happy and we value mm -hmm. um, people who are working on themselves to be happy and and to be the best they can be. Mm -hmm. And he's basically committed to being a brooding sad sack. Then we can't really be around him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's right. like there's only so many times that um, you could watch somebody walk down the street and fall in the same hole. Right. You know, and there are some some people out there that who have not gotten clear about themselves mm -hmm. who will be great friends to those people and rescue them every time they fall into a hole mm -hmm. and be like oh my god I'm so worried about Joe or I'm so worried about whatever mm -hmm. the hell and oh my god they did it again and oh my god they're drinking again or oh my god you want to be on TV honey no what? I have no idea what he's looking for. Okay. What's he looking for? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think he's looking for his drugs. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, so you have people in your life that aren't willing to, to get better. Okay? And, you know, some people are would find what we do very mean but you know you got to look out for your star player mm -hmm. and you know there have been people that we've cut out of our lives mm -hmm. because they refuse to get better right and keep doing the same shit over and over and over again mm -hmm. and after you've been with them for like a couple of years mm -hmm. and like you know supported them and helped you know done what you could to help them see differently and process them and work with them and they're still doing the same shit, then you just got to do, you know what? I'm done with this. And I don't want to make it sound like this is, you know, a, a checklist that we have. Yes. And it's like these 
criteria. Oh, I'm sorry, you only got a you know a 69 percent. You know, <laughs> you're gone. But it is more since the values don't don't match. It's it's either a quick or a slow um, pulling apart. Yeah, you know, or they they start to not. You know, they don't have a place. Excellent, Caesar. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. That's Energy it. vampires. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. totally. Right. Energy vampires. Mm -hmm. Suck. Ha ha. ha, -ha. You know, <laughs> that's the thing exactly. that, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, and it, and we did this, um, we, have, we had a friend mm -mm. that just kept fucking up over and over again. I mean, you know, kept doing the same things, expecting different results, and why can't I be, and who, blah, 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 right. and, you know, <laughs> drinking, you know, so much so mm -hmm. that at one point, uh, calling me, you know, having the police call me at 1.30 in the morning to go pick her up, because, you know, they didn't want to arrest her, and they should have, they should have totally arrested mm -hmm. her, um, and I went and rescued her, and then, but all sorts of shit happened, yeah. and then, you know, after all this stuff happens, we were going through stuff, and all she could focus on was her own stuff, and I finally did one of those, you know, you're not the only one in this relationship, and she just kind of did this, oh my god, and then, like, left us in the middle of our crises, and, mm -hmm. and I decided, and Paul decided, you know, that's enough. Right. We're not putting up with this mm -hmm. crap anymore, after, like, how many years? Mm -hmm. And um, then the whole world turned against us, because she's a nice person. Yeah. You know, and we were the bitches. And that's, I mean, actually, that's the, I'm the bitch. Yes, I'm the bitch. Exactly. <laughs> conversation. Um, actually, I had a, we had a friend um, do that during a meeting, a business meeting, <laughs> um, which was hilarious. And to this day, I think of it, and I still I pee use. myself a little bit. <laughs> but it's true. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, when someone's such a, you know, a victim mm -hmm. to the world, the whole world is going to look at those right. people like, how can you abandon them in, in your hour of need? Mm -hmm. And the en energy vampires tend to be those big victims. And you have to just, like, you know, um, scrape them off. See, that's okay. We talk about boundaries. This is where the boundaries part com comes in. Because when you have good boundaries that are based on, you know, well-explored core values, then what ends up happening, that's why I said it's not so much a checklist, as much as you're setting the boundary. This is a healthy boundary. I don't right. want to do that anymore. So if you can abide by that, you know, if the other person can abide by that, then they can stay in your life. The thing is that the en energy vampires, as you, you know, so well put it, you know, um, can't. Mm -hmm. So they're sitting there going, well, I can't be because with they you anymore. Suck up because all your I, happiness. I, right. I'm trying to suck out all of your energy, all of your happiness, right. all of your time, all of your, you know, all of that good stuff. Yes. Yes, it is okay to cut out family members. Yeah, okay, it is it's totally okay to cut out family members mm -hmm. because, and that's what pisses me off the most because then it's like, oh my God, but they're your family. I'm like, who gives a shit? Because these are the people that you think that would treat you nicer. Right. Because they're your mm -hmm. fucking family, yeah. right? But no, what do they do? They screw you even more, mm -hmm. you know, because they figure, well, you're not going anywhere. I mean, this is what I say. When you're a kid, you, can, you have absolutely no choice. Right. You are stuck with the people that you're stuck with. When you're an adult, you mm -hmm. choose your family. You choose your friends, and they become your family. Mm -hmm. And they usually are better than your family. And you usually can have a more intimate relationship them, with them than your family. I mean, I'm very blessed that I have a brother and a sister that have both worked on themselves enough that I could have a very good relationship with them. And the same thing with my parents. But that took a lot of fucking work. I mean, this is not mm -hmm. something that happened overnight or anything like that. Right. And I have certain members of my family that I will never talk to again. Mm -hmm. You know, I have cousins that they might as well be strangers. They might as well be Charles Manson. Right. Because I am never going to talk to them again. You know, and what happens? I have a sibling who's like, oh, I have no problem mm -hmm. with that person. So I'm like, yeah, because they never screwed you. Right. <laughs> you, right. There's the big difference. Mm -hmm. You know? Now, and this is, okay, this is an important thing. When we talk about, you know, cutting out family... Um, one, you're not really cutting them out in that you are still in a relationship with them. Right. Okay. We talk about this a bunch. You're always in relationship. It's just that that is the way the relationship looks like. So when she's talking about like, uh, you know, uh, cousins that she, 
It's like she does have a relationship. Yes, the extremely distant. Is, right, or it is a guarded one, and I'll put it how I'll, I'll guarded, use that one very nice. Guarded by machine right. guns and bombs. Yes, and that right. one. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just one cousin basically right. that I am like that with. Um, she lives mm -hmm. in Maine. Um, actually, she went to uh, St. Catharines and Bishop Montgomery. Mm -hmm. um, she lives in Maine, and I have no contact with her. Mm -hmm. um, I have no need to contact her. I don't even friend her on Facebook. Yeah. Now, her um, other siblings don't have that relationship right. with her. I have actually so, one of her siblings, who you graduated with, uh, Caesar, is um, is actually we're, we're close with. I know it. <laughs> Caesar. Caesar. SC? No? BMHS? No? Is it yes? Is he going to say yes? I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, now. we'll see if it's the same Caesar yeah, or not. That's right. <laughs> um, I have a feeling. I have a feeling he is. Um, you know, her sister, I have a very good relationship with. You know, and and I'm okay with that, mm -hmm. keeping it separate. All right. And she knows I can't stand her sister. Yeah. And she, I mean, actually, she never does one of those. Oh, why don't you get along oh, no, with no, my? Because no. <laughs> oh, she, no, no. right. she knows she's a bitch. She knows she's a bitch. Yeah. You know what? It's like it's that whole thing of you know, screw me once, shame on you. Screw me twice, shame on me. Mm -hmm. That goes with your family. That goes with your friends. Mm -hmm. That goes with your lovers. That goes with business. In general, mm -hmm. they expect to kill. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Cut them off. And you know what? It's tough. Yes, it is me. Thank you. Okay. I, I told you it was him. <laughs> yeah, just making fun. Anyway, so. I hear um, that there's more than one uh, Caesar. Caesar in the United It could have been Caesar show. Milan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, back to because we're well, running out of time. Yeah, I but. do. I just want to emphasize though, I don't like to, to say cut them off. Okay, set no, healthy boundaries. Right, cutting off, cutting right. off is. I mean, if we go by by marriage and family theory, yeah. cut off is actually very unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Cut off means that you did it for an unhealthy reason. Right. You know, when we say things like "well, fuck them" and then cut them off, mm -hmm. that leaves that energy sticking there. To that, um, if you go by energy systems and like auras and stuff mm -hmm. like that you are actually courting that right. person mm -hmm. and then you have that that constant tug and connection between that person because of that anger mm -hmm. that you created right. and because you won't talk to them at that point it's always there it's always there You'll never so then right instead there. what you say mm -hmm. is I have decided to create a, a boundary mm -hmm. to protect myself from energy vampires right. and other crap like that right. Yeah, so the boundary with the, you know, the, the brothers-in-laws there is, you know, I'm not carrying them. We're not, you know, whatever, giving them money. We're not, you know, all of the things mm -hmm. that, you know, and then if all of that is cool, they can be in your life. That's fine. If they're not going to take anything from you, they're going to do all of the things that you want. Then sure. Mm -hmm. Now, whether they do that or not. yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> yes. You know, I mean, and people, you know, it's like um, uh, Cougar Mama mentioned um, that they're not awake yet. There are some people that will spend their whole life asleep. Yes. And there are some people that will will walk through life like with blinders on and not realize that they create their life. And those are the people that we, you have to be very weary of. Mm -hmm. um, because those are the people who get things get done to them by life. You know, they are buffeted around by life. You know, they're the ones that lose their house, you know, during the storm. They're the ones that, you know, get fired and get shot all in the same day. You know, all this stuff happens at them. Right. You know, not to them, at them. Mm -hmm. And they are a victim of life in general. I choose, you know, and I speak only for myself, I choose not to be around them because I value my sanity. I value my happiness. Mm -hmm. I value keeping my my energy field intact right. and um, using that energy for the people that I love. Okay, I happen to be married to someone who also values the same thing. Exactly. And this mm -hmm. this is how, after you know, twenty one years, we go strong because we are a partnership in that. There hasn't ever been someone who's entered our lives where one of us has been like, oh no, I so want to be friends with them. And the other one's like, uh, no. No, right? You know, that has never happened. That's never happened. Not, no. not at all. I mean, not even, not even family. It's mm -hmm. more like 
and it's almost like this instantaneous, ooh, don't like that person. Yeah. Ooh, you know, mm -hmm. like, we know, you know, if I say, you know what, you're really going to love this person, he'll be like, okay, and then mm -hmm. we'll meet, and then, yeah, sure enough, that he works. does. Right. And he's always done the same thing with me. Mm -hmm. We don't have conflicting things, because, I mean, we could say that it's, you know, our energies aligned, or we could say that our core values are bonded and we're, and we're very similar, you know, or you could say whatever foo foo thing of, you know, being soulmates. I don't like that one. Um, <laughs> because it's so foo foo. That's yeah, why. Right. I mean, uh -huh. it's one of those. You know, we don't do foo foo very well. Yeah. No, no, no. Because it, it's, been, it's been, it's been, it's um, been. Go watch TV. Go play. It's been whored out too much. Mm -hmm. You know, soulmates have, has been whored out too much. What it is is that we share common values. Mm -hmm. well, what it is is that we are bonded over certain values in our life like being an in integrity being honest being truthful and this thing right here look at that say uh, hello <laughs> gotta keep talking when i have four okay. minutes so <laughs> I know. that's ours yeah that's ours yeah. say hello hello <laughs> that's ours see um so what was i going to say so that is so important you know, creating the, the, the relationship from the foundation up. Mm -hmm. Not from just, you know, it's like, hey, had we created our, our foundation just based on titties and things like that, it wouldn't have been. No. no. Well, <laughs> it worked for a while. It would have worked for a little while. No. <laughs> until the titties didn't, didn't look the same. Um, They're always lovely and perky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your blindness knows no bounds. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. Be aware of your deal breakers, mm -hmm. your core values, right. and live a happier life. That's what, I mean, this is all, all we're doing, every show that we're doing is building up to our happiness series. Right. This is, you know, we're, we're laying the foundation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we created a, oh, actually Paul created a, a Facebook page. What is it? Um, a million people committed to being happy. Right. And the idea is that we're going to come up with, for next week's show, mm -hmm. we are going to finally put out our happiness manifesto right and these are these are the values the core values of what it means to be a happy person the reason why we're doing this yeah. is because yeah well yeah i put out that facebook page and i actually got people saying that they're not, oh my god yeah they can yeah. be committed to being happy we've gotten we've gotten emails mm -hmm. and stuff like that that has Seriously, almost made us throw up in our mouth. <laughs> just so really just rancid crap that people say. Things like, um, what was she saying? Um, how can I be happy with the price of gas and IRS mm -hmm. and right. mm -hmm. uh, global warming yeah. and all the, I can't be happy, I right. have uh -huh. to be sad. Right. Another one talking about how advertising is, oh. you know, what an can't asshole. be happy the because fact, of that. The guy works in advertising. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know they they devalue us down. You know, it's like when did become like, when did we we go from being customers to consumers right. mm -hmm. from the very beginning? Right. You know, <laughs> it's like uh, I think advertising people actually changed the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Idiot. Right. Well, so we anyway, are the point our is the manifesto. manifesto, and then I swear to God, mm -hmm. this is it's just so many people out there. It's like when things like you know when people cry at us, saying, "Well, how can you be so happy? What can I do to be happy?" Well, decide you're just going to be happy and mm -hmm. just do it already. Right. You know? So. Be happy. Yes. <laughs> so then it's, we are creating this manifesto so that, that we could solidify this group like an army and just start infusing it everywhere. That's our idea. I like it. Plus we That's want. It. And we will destroy all people who are not happy. <laughs> <laughs> no. No? And then, no. And then we need to work on that show, Cougar Mama, and do the whole, you know. Oh shit! What was I doing? Oh, uh, how's this oh, gonna work? Sure. Yeah. How's this gonna work? I swear, I want to do that because I want to be able to do this for a show. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, but it's all about being happy, yes. and we are definitely happy, and we're happy that you guys came. Thank you, Caesar. Yeah. Thank you know, you. maybe next time when we're in LA, so, um, Mr. Caesar Man, we could actually see you. Yeah. And you don't have to play hermit. No, Angela. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are we done? No, nope, got we got uh, 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Okay, so next week is the um, next Friday is mm -hmm. the Happiness Manifesto, which should be very interesting mm -hmm. since our in-laws will be here. We'll see how happy we are next week. 
Yes. They come right. on Wednesday. We're but, committed to being happy. Oh, yeah. We're going to be very happy. Hmm. I think it's just getting everything together that's driving us crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, my neck is all fucked up. And I have bail money. Thank you. Bail money. <laughs> Excellent. No. I have I have won these people over. I had one out my, oh, yeah. my father-in-law over a long time ago. Say Bye. goodbye. Yes. Love you guys. We'll Thank see you, you next week.